You awoke in a cold sweat from your dream, looking around the dim room. You didn't remember anything that happened, except there was just a loud bang at the end. But you passed it off as just a nightmare. It had been a reoccurring nightmare you've been having for quite a few days now. You slowly arose from your bed, preparing your lunch for the day before heading off to work, stopping at a local store to pick up something along the way. As you drove, you reflected on your life, before and now, how your life partner had recently passed away from an unknown cancer at such a young age, how your children had recently graduated from college and were now living their own lives with a decent paying job, and you couldn't help to feel this certain feeling inside. It was like a sickness. It was a feeling of despairing emptiness. You went to your small cubicle and started to work at your small desk. Your job was a fairly decent one that paid well in this day and age considering the economy. But it was so repetitive. It felt like after a while all you were doing was pressing keys over and over, moving your mouse around, and giving it commands on an outdated personal computer. Click click. You had been repeating the same tasks for the past years with no raise or any comfort at home to make you feel better, realizing that you're all, all alone now. After a few hours of this miserable process came lunchtime. You quickly got up, bringing your lunchbox along with you as you moved to where everybody else was eating. Stanley, a co-worker, and a close friend here, waited for you by the water dispenser. He was wearing the usual work attire, a white shirt over a black dress pants and a small red tie. He greeted you happily, as you walked over to him, adjusting his brown glasses. You liked Stanley. He was a pleasure to chat with, at least at first, but the dullness settled quickly as well. The two of you would always end up talking about the same subjects every lunch. You were afraid to admit it, but... It was becoming boring, that everything was in fact, but you were afraid of how he would react to that, that he just might care too much over you. You didn't want to shock him and surprise him too much. He did, however, speculate that you were becoming increasingly more empty and bitter, but you always assured him that you were fine and he should stop pursuing his questions. After a few minutes of his worthless congression, you set off to eat your lunch for the day. It was always the same thing every day, ham sandwich with a banana, sometimes he brought a soda, other times it was just a mere water bottle. A few years ago, back when your loved one was still roaming the earth, she would sometimes throw in something else. Even if it was something plain and simple, like a pickle, you always got the light over it. It was a break from the same food every day. Nowadays, you didn't even have the time to throw in something extra, but you were certain that you had quite a surprise for that day. You consumed your sandwich very quickly without hesitation, with your fruit to follow. Nobody seemed to notice how fast you were eating your food. It was almost too easy, you thought. This is when you usually returned to the cubicle and got back to work. But today, you had to do a little extra. From your bag, you withdrew a small handgun you had just picked up from your last paycheck earlier that morning. Nobody noticed it for a few seconds, before a woman started to scream and point at the sight of that revolver. Some of them begged you to stop, reaching out to you. They were trying to talk you into not doing it. You barked at them, making empty threats that you would not shoot anybody as long as they don't get in within touching distance. You felt bad about it. You were a really nice, caring person. One of them quickly phoned the police, saying that they were going to get you help. They didn't care. The dullness and melancholy, the emptiness, it all has to end. You looked at the crowd, Stanley standing out in front. He pleaded to you, begging you to reconsider your thoughts and actions. He offered to help you. Without saying a word to him, you opened your mouth and you placed the pistol inside of it. You heard the masses scream before your vision faded to black as you pulled the trigger. You awoke from a cold sweat from your dream, looking at the dim room with a fright. You didn't remember anything that happened except the loud bang at the end. You passed it off as just a nightmare. It had been a reoccurring nightmare you've had for a couple days now. You slowly arose from your bed, preparing lunch for the next day before heading off to work, stopping at a local store to pick up something along the way.